All right, I guess I'll just start while this kind of warms up. Um, I'm Jerry Schneider, and uh, my project is Ross um, Vehicular Traffic Model. And basically what it is is a way to model a lot of traffic um, in parallel on the Blue Jeep. Um, it's written, um, it's based off of a program that Professor Carruthers So, um, a lot of this stuff was gone over last week by um, all of the talks on Watson that you saw. Um, this problem is natura naturally parallelizable, uh, which means basically the more processes you have, the bigger model you can have. Um, there's, um, see, why try? I'm trying to go through this quick because I'm uh, running out of time, but I came with a lot to talk about. Um, so, traffic. Um, can be a big problem when you have to do large-scale evacuations. Maybe if you have some kind of conflict on the East Coast and you need to evacuate everybody westward. Um, so this is kind of a model for how to do those types of uh, scenarios. Um, it's pretty simple to model. Cars on a road is not really too much uh, difficult mathematics to that. Um, and uh, basically, what this, what my project's goal is to be, is going to be, is uh, measuring performance of how well we can run these uh, really large-scale models and how quickly they run and um, basically how much efficiency we can get. Um, some previous work that has been done is, um, here's a link to it, um, I'll post that on my blog so you can get to that. Um, and they had 32 processors that they were running their <coughs> model on and uh, 65,000 intersections and 13 million vehicles. Um, and this is the model kind of design that I'm going to base my model off of, uh, even though it's running on a different program. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, some potentials we can have when we're looking at the blue gene is that I personally have access to 512 nodes, which is uh, about 10,000 processors, or 1,000 processors. Um, so some of my goals might be there are 70 million cars in the US today, approximately. Um, and 300,000 signaled intersections, uh, which is important when we're talking about the model is signaled intersections and not. Um, so a lot of this is based on um, maybe not exactly modeling the US specifically, but something on that kind of scale, um, like a hypothetical country. Um, a little bit about Ross. Um, it was developed by Professor Carruthers and some of his grad students. It stands for Rensselaer Optimistic uh, Simulation System. Um, optimistic is the key word here. Um, the way that this works is there's a bunch of nodes which are not processor, they're not the nodes on the blue gene. Um, and the nodes are all mapped to a specific processor. Um, and then there's lots of processors with lots of nodes mapped to them. And they're gonna, all the nodes are sending data back and forth to each other. And um, basically, you want to try to get as many nodes that are going to send data to each other on one processor as you can. Uh, so that you're not having one processor sending data to another processor, or you're trying to limit that to as much as possible, because the system is going to try to guess at what kind of information it's going to receive, and then calculate you know uh, x amount of time, and then check to see if it actually did receive the information that it thought it would, was going to, and if it didn't, it's going to have to go backwards. So we're trying to avoid going backwards. So that's um, kind of how um, I'm planning on designing models. Um, Ross works. It has custom data structures that I have to write. Um, there's examples on this website, um, and they're pretty simple. Um, it basically consists of well, um, I believe there's a picture. Um, this is basically how um, my model is going to work: is that there are intersections, and those are all your nodes, and then um, cars are generated at the intersections, and they're sent into the roads, and based on the length of the car and the speed the car's traveling and uh, a few other things, um, determines how many cars can fit on that specific road of a specific length. And they're gonna time step through until they get to another node, at which point that node will take them up if there's enough room in that intersection based on uh, how big it is. 
and they sit at that intersection, the next one, until there's enough room to put it out into the next row. Um, the cars, when they're, uh, the vehicles were, when they're generated, they have um, a starting location, and then they have a overall um, goal where they want to get to, and it uses um, some kind of uh, shortest path algorithm um, to, to get there, to figure out, so each node knows which, which direction to send it to next, if it's going to send it uh, north, south, east, or west, basically. Um, so, I talked a little bit about the reverse computation, um, and um, basically, the, the important part about making these models is to make the processors not interact with each other a whole lot, um, because that's going to really slow down the system. Um, and because I only have 10 minutes at a time to run these things, uh, it's going to be pretty important. So um, if I'm making a model, it's going to try to be based off of what kind of scenario I'm going to run. So if it's going to be an evacuation of the East Coast, uh, people are probably going to be going west. So you want really long, uh, narrower um, mapping of your processors to, or of your nodes to your processors. So because the cars are going west, they're all going to stay, all the information is going to try to stay on that processor. Um, and not jump to a processor that's mapping north or south of that. Um, so that's a general idea. Um, and there are some optimi optimizations you can make. Um, it's uh, a little bit more complicated. <laughs> um, so here are my upcoming cycles that I have. Um, there, next two weeks, I'm going to finish the data structures um, and get those working with a really small model. And then over the two weeks after that, I'm going to try to design a full-size model with um, hopefully 70 million vehicles. Um, that might take a little bit longer. And then um, I'm going to try to optimize my model, make it run faster, start collecting performance data, and uh, have a research paper. Um, thanks and questions. Do you have the spatial layout of the actual intersections? Like, I mean, are they clustered around like city nodes kind of a thing? And um, well, that's, that's all in designing the model, is that you, you actually will design where the intersections are. Um, it's not, you really have to design the models from the ground up. So you specify where all the nodes are and um, which directions they have roads going out on. So, you know, you might have, um, it's, it's basically like a coordinate system uh, to simplify it. And then you're going to have, like, uh, you know, say you have four nodes. They don't all necessarily have to be connected to each other. Um, but uh, so you specify which roads are going out and which roads are coming in. And um, you can basically design, like, a city type by uh, just clustering your nodes together. It's, yeah, you, you have to kind of write the whole thing. So, yes. Uh, you talked about shortest path algorithms. Is that? just doing a straight distance based shortest path or are you also looking at like trying to figure out what maybe a shortest path is um, based time on wise. results? Um, yeah, so I know the the model that I that I was uh, basing mine off of, I think it used just a distance formula. Um, I'm not sure how well uh, like kinda like it would update and the yeah I'm not I'm not actually sure how well Ross would do with that. Um, I have to once I get my structure set up, it'll be probably more evident, but I'll have to look into that. Cool. Yes? Uh, so, the, the project isn't so much trying to produce like a, a, a useful model of, of the U.S. or some other situation as trying to figure out how you, like, what techniques you could actually use to model it? Right. It's more of a, a going to be a, a performance evaluation tool um, that people can use. Um, I mean, theoretically, you could make a, a model of the United States, but it would take uh, a lot more time to get it accurate. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is kind of get collect some data from the United States, the you know, road densities, um, population densities, and try to simulate roughly um, uh, how, how the United States is kind of laid out, and then um, you know, run some come up with some simulations, uh, some scenarios that would require a lot of people to move somewhere else at once. Um, I know you talked about designing your own model, which makes a lot of sense. But maybe for future work, 
do you know if there's any uh, information available on like the country's roads? So I know there are, is a lot of information with GIS stuff for like uh, terrain and all of that, and um, because I've seen some of that used for like river mapping and things like that. But do you know if there's any kind of way that you might be able to auto populate that? Better? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that too far, um, but I'm I'm sure there is. That would be really um, cool. Yeah, to just kind of like yeah. I know um, in Boston. What do you, what do people do? Exactly. Um, I know Ross takes in the the way you have to format map the data to kind of put it in um, is really really specific. So um, it would take um, some figuring out, um, and also. Um, yeah, just just the kind of the input and uh, to this, we'd, you'd have to format all the data that uh, you'd want to process before you actually would run it on the BlueBeam because the the I/O and those parallel systems are just really terrible. So you don't want to be doing any kind of stuff like that. Um, any other questions? Traffic modeling is more like evacuation modeling. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. I mean, you could relate this kind of to other stuff like uh, mail, possibly, stuff like that. Um, I mean, there's a lot of applications where, you, where you'd have similar types of models. And uh, it's more of a, yeah, a performance, and I just kind of pick traffic as, as a good way to model because it's pretty simple. Thank you. Sending emails about if your blog is not updated or if something that would be a problem with the observatory, but that would be a problem with your thing. So 